Hey, good evening, everybody. The Indiana Hoosiers were back inside the friendly confines of Assembly Hall tonight, coming off of perhaps their most disappointing loss of the season, a road setback against Penn State. Now, Chandler says the sport is growing in popularity, and the crowd behind me is evidence of that. After dropping their first two conference games, the Cardinals needed to get back on track to bowl eligibility. Thanks to a big second-half effort from their sophomore running back, they were able to do just that. James Gilbert ran for a career-high 264 yards on 34 carries in Ball State's 31-21 win. It was the second-best single-game rushing performance in program history. Yeah, guys, this Northern Illinois sideline definitely excited as they begin the second half. They just met as a team out on the field and jumped around a little bit to get ready for the second half. Obviously, it's a difficult thing to start a season 0-4, but head coach Rod Carey told us earlier this week he doesn't think that he's had a senior class that would have been able to handle this as well as this senior class has. And once again, it was turnovers that cost the Cards a chance to win on the road. Dunham had worked out for three other teams prior to today. He has one other workout scheduled in Chicago on Monday, but this one for the Indiana kid was a special one. Already up 13, Colin Hartman says, look what I found. And on the other end, check out number 33 running the floor. Troy Williams saves it, Hartman bangs it. Assembly Hall, loud noises. The first challenge for Ball State in Mid-American Conference play, Northern Illinois. Now the Cardinals haven't beaten the Huskies since 2008, but you don't have to remind anyone on this team of that fact. They're all very well aware. Mini camp practice was held right here at Lucas Oil Stadium on Wednesday, and it was open to the public, an opportunity for these fans to get their first glimpse of the 2016 Colts on the field. On November 24th of last year, Ball State football finished its 2015 season with just three wins. Fast forward to 2016, the Cardinals have already won three games, and it's not even October yet. Later on, though, check out this move by Daleville's Michaela Craig. She puts her defender in the spin cycle and finishes with a little teardrop. Moving to football, the Colts enter their final week of voluntary off-season workouts as they prepare for minicamp next Tuesday. There's been a lot of talk about the new faces in the locker room, especially the rookies. Later on in the first half, it's Davis again stepping into a trade ball in transition. Purdue up 16. Mackey is lit. Now, if you look at the preseason Mid-American Conference polls, Ball State was picked to finish fifth in the West Division. But don't tell head coach Mike knew that because he's been here before. But Kobe and the Lakers came all the way back. Less than three minutes to go. Mamba puts the Lakers up by three with this tough fadeaway jumper. But Paul George, who grew up idolizing Bryant, and he showed some Mamba-like instinct late in this game, drives to his left, scores in his foul with less than a minute to play. That gave Indiana the lead for good, and the Pacers beat the Lakers tonight, 89-87. to Taking a peek at the Eastern Conference standings, remember the top four seeds get home court advantage for the first round of the playoffs. Indiana right now sitting in fifth, a game ahead of Atlanta. A couple games back of Boston, still plenty of time to go this season as the Knicks come to town tomorrow. Your story is an incredible one. Ball State was your only Division I offer coming out of high school. You come here and obviously you took it from there. When you look back on your time here as a player, what are you most proud of? Uh, I'm most proud of just the, the hard work I put in. With success comes expectations. That saying rings true for the Ball State men's basketball team as they embark on a new season's journey. That's all for sports. I'm Peter Hood. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. It was a disappointment. Like I said, 8-8 eight eight is not good enough. Not good enough. That's what everyone in the Colts organization will tell you when talking about last season. And in response to the disappointing year, the organization made a lot of changes in the offseason. Enter new defensive coordinator, Ted Monachino. I want them to look fast. I want them to look like they play together. I want them to look uh, confident in each other. And I want them to look uh, like they're not afraid to make a huge play for us when we need to. Monachino is trying to make big changes to a defense that ranked 26th in the league last year. It's still early, but his group seems confident they can improve. I think it's a lot of, a lot of tools we have in place, and uh, the guys are making big strides, and, uh, and we're improving by leaps and bounds, so I, I feel real good about what we have. There's no doubt the Colts have had their fair share of defensive inconsistencies in the Chuck Pagano era, but Pagano is optimistic that that will change this season. 
we believe every year, you know, and there's going to be uh, things that happen. Um, you know, our goals and our vision has not changed. Uh, we want to be a dominant defense, and until we get there, we're going to keep grinding and doing everything uh, within our power uh, to get to that point. Around India has always been about the offense, scoring a lot of points, a lot of points. We want to be that defense that, you know, when we come out, they cheer and also not just when the offense come out. We don't want to be labeled an offensive team. We want to be labeled, you know, a team. A team with hopes of lifting the Lombardi at the end of the season. Peter Hood, 24-Hour News 8.